Before we dive into talking about engaging students during remote teaching, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the South African context and the challenges of moving rapidly to remote teaching and learning. Remote learning in South Africa is a far from ideal solution, especially for traditionally face-to-face -face institutions. We will have to anticipate a range of problems, accessing remote learning spaces, adapting our practices and creating accommodations for the diversity of students and staff facing this task. However, at this point, remote teaching is the situation we find ourselves in. UCT students are officially on holiday until the 6th of April, and there is every indication that term two will run remotely. While we hope to be back into face-to-face -face mode at the beginning of the second semester, this is by no means guaranteed. We will need to adjust and make accommodations and offer special dispensations, and above all, care for the people around us. Our principle moving into this difficult time is that we are working from a place of uncertainty. The ground under our feet may shift at any moment, and we cannot grow too attached to any single response. In short, we will need to exercise agility, kindness and compassion with others and ourselves, because any response we choose will have consequences. Universities across the world are adopting one of three responses to COVID-19, social distancing, a face-to-face -face teaching shutdown, and a full campus closure with no attempt at continuing the academic year. The shutdown with remote learning phase will see in the UCT context an extended holiday for students for now until the 6th of April with a closure of campus to students and staff strongly being encouraged to work from home. Teaching and learning may continue remotely in the second term with plans, for example, for deferred exams, winter terms, etc., beginning to be developed for those who are unable to study from home. Full shutdown and the reorganization of the academic year will pose a substantial disruption to teaching and learning with a shift in term dates. When thinking about remote learning under these circumstances, i.e. a rapid response, being a face-to-face -face institution and the inequalities of the South African context, it is helpful to think about four main teaching activities in the classroom. All lecturers will have discipline specific and preferred ways of, for example, presenting content, engaging their students in learning activities, communicating with their students and organizing learning, and assessing student learning. In the previous session, which will be available on the SILT Remote Teaching website, we talked about presenting content in a remote teaching and learning context. In this session, we're talking about developing, encouraging and supporting student activities in a remote context. The sessions running during the rest of the week will address the other activities. Before you start thinking about student activities though, it is wise to review your course schedule and outline. You can do this by number one, listing all planned teaching and learning activities then identifying what can be taught or achieved remotely. You're going to need to find or create materials or activities for these. Then move on to identifying what cannot be achieved remotely. You will need to liaise with HODs and colleagues about activities that may need to be dropped or for which special arrangements will need to be made. You might like to use something like the table below to work through this process. This table represents an imaginary course. In the first column, we have the week or the date in which a particular activity happens. In the second, a kind of brief description of the teaching or learning activity. In the third, whether or not it's possible to teach that activity remotely. And in the fourth, the beginnings of some space for a plan of action. So for example, if this were your course, you might want to consider whether the student activity of a face-to-face -face tutorial was possible to recreate remotely 
and if so, how you might go about doing that. Similarly, you might consider um, how students would, for example, present findings on a particular examination to the class and how to teach that remotely and what your plan of action for that might be. If you attended the first webinar, this idea of transferring, translating and transforming activities or content, um, communications will actually be quite familiar to you. So what we have to think about is how we might take activities that usually happen in the face-to-face -face space and transfer, translate or transform these for the remote teaching context. So let's take an example of tutorials. A lot of people have discussion type tutorials in their, in their classes or courses. We might transfer these online by simply uploading the tutorial question to a forum. But if we really want to begin to take advantage of the online space, we might recognize that students would need additional scaffolding, such as guidance for online engagement. More importantly, though, we could encourage students to review the chat and to create summaries. In fact, we could kind of transform or elevate the typical tutorial discussion for this particular space. In this session, we're going to look at some different tools and strategies that you can use in order to guide and support student activities in a remote context. And the first tool that we're suggesting that you familiarize yourself with is the lessons tool in Vula. Lessons helps with structuring your content. It's really about creating learning pathways for students. Particularly in the remote learning context, it's absolutely critical that students have a sense of structure about their learning. The lessons tool can be used to help students to navigate the learning experience and as a site for instructional text for lecturers. Additionally, it integrates other tools on Vula and can pull third party tools such as Google Docs into Vula. Lessons can create a better overall look and feel, but its real strength is around structuring the student experience. And if you'd like to, you can watch a quick screencast on how to use lessons here. Over the next two slides, you're going to see some examples of the lessons tool in action. So this is a lecturer view of the lessons tool. You know it's a lecturer view because up here at the top, you've got add content, more tools and reorder, which tells us that this person is in the process of editing this particular site. But what they've done um, in this with this tool is you'll see that they've got multiple lessons tools created here. Each of these little books is a lessons tool, a lessons, an instance of the lessons tool. And what this lecturer has done is that they have turned each module into a lesson. And it begins, for example, with a greeting, moves on to a little bit of input, activities, and so on. Let's look at another example of the lessons tool at work. What you will see here is that the lecturer who designed this particular site has used one lessons tool and then various sub pages. Each of these is a sub page in the lessons tool. And so when you go to the single lessons tool called course material, you can get to various things, including the course schedule. The next one would be the course overview and then themes one through six and various other activities like a pre course task and so on. So students would always start in this course with the course material using a lessons tool. Sometimes lecturers are a little bit unsure about what should go into a lessons template. So for example, this template here, this gives you a little bit of an outline of what might go into a single lesson. This assumes that the lecturer begins the week with a welcoming email and ends up with a kind of closing note. And what they would have added to their lessons page is to introduce the week or module, introduce the objectives, 
Identify any key deadlines or schedules for key activities. Put in some piece of core content. For example, this could be a reading or it could be a podcast. It could be a narrated PowerPoint like this one. It could be a video. Followed by some kind of short student activity, which is the focus of today's session. Again, for example, a discussion through a forum, a Vula question or poll, an MCQ or a short blog post. This would be followed by another instance of core content and another short activity. Might include an assignment for the week and then some kind of additional or extension materials. We're suggesting that for the remote teaching context, you try to limit these where possible. And then we suggest a checklist at the end of the week. So when a student logs into, for example, the lessons page for week seven, they will see clearly all the different activities that they need to be able to achieve during that week. And this should help them to at least understand whether or not they are staying on task with their studying. A student activity that lecturers are often most nervous about replacing or losing is the idea of questions in a face-to-face -face lecture. In a face-to-face -face lecture, we have the luxury of our students in front of us in real time, and they can raise questions as they go. This can be a little bit harder in a remote context, but we, need, we can plan for it. So for example, what you can do is that at the end of a piece of core content, you can create a short question space for students where either using forums or the questions tool or Vula tests and quizzes, you can encourage students to ask questions or to respond to questions based on the course material. Another activity that causes some challenge for lecturers in the remote context is collaborative and group work activities. A successful translation or transformation of a face-to-face -face collaborative group work activity requires that you think about redesigning the task, setting up the group in ways that compensate for the remote context that you actively support group processes as a staff member, and that in addition to this, you also support writing an assessment. There are four key UCT supported groups of tools that can be very useful in this context. So in terms of giving groups a space to store material and to work synchronously on a document or a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint, Nothing beats the Google Suite, um, although Office 365 is also very, very familiar to most students. So you could choose either the Google Suite or Office 365 as a space for students to do their work. Students also need those space to chat um, about the work and space to organize themselves. And they can either use MS Teams or something like WhatsApp for this purpose. If you want to keep an eye on that, you might want to encourage them to use the forums or the chat space in Vula, but sometimes that becomes a little bit too visible for students. A key part of the face-to-face -face learning experience in the UCT context is often tutorials. Whether these are a humanities, social sciences type tutorial, characterized by discussion and debate, or whether they are a sort of EBE sciences type tutorial where students will work on a problem set together. Replacing the face-to-face -face tutorial is a design challenge for the remote context. The first principle you can apply is to think about distributing the tutorial across time. There are a couple of reasons for this. First of all, in the context in which we work, not all our students have easy access to, and reliable access to data, which means that if they only have one small window of time in which to join the tutorial and something goes wrong with their data access, they're not going to be able to, to participate. 
On the other hand, if you distribute the tutorial across a slightly more extended period, so instead of having two hours to participate in a discussion or to submit a um, TUT activity, you allow people two days, they're more likely to be able to engage. Another thing that you have to think about when replacing face-to-face -face tutorials is that lecturers often chunk material in tutorials verbally. So they will have a plan that for the first third of the TUT, we're going to work on this. And the second third, we're going to work on something else. And the third third, we're going to work on a third thing. And what is helpful in the remote context is to split that up into three separate activities so that students can clearly finish one at a time and know when they have achieved a particular outcome. This chunking is also going to make it possible for students to more successfully manage their time when they have other demands on it. Finally, in relation to face-to-face -to -face tutorials, it's a good idea to think about combining tools from the LMS. So for example, blogs, the touch groups management tool and forums could in combination be very powerful for helping you to manage your face-to-face -face tutorials. A big question though that departments need to pay attention to is what to do about tutors. So if you have a group of tutors, are you going to continue to use them? If you are, do they have device access? Is the department doing something about paying for their data in addition to their time or else they're going to have to incur that cost? And do they know what it is that as tutors they will need to be responsible for during this time? While it's almost inevitable that we think about the remote teaching context as something to be avoided and as a challenge to be overcome, the challenge of COVID-19 is also an opportunity for students to think authentically and for us to pose relevant questions. So our students will be scattered all over the country, and this will allow us to actually draw on the context in which they find themselves in order to think about the content that they are learning. So we would encourage you where possible to actually leverage student context and to think about creating the possibility for co-created tasks. Co-created tasks do, however, take a little bit more time to figure out. But typically, they are open tasks that allow some form of interpreta interpretation or contextualization by students. And this relates very strongly to the idea of community-engaged learning. Now, this might not be possible for all the activities that you have planned in your course. But even bringing in just a small selection of activities um, or a small element like this to some of your activities can be a very energizing experience for students. Finally, as you are thinking about student activities, consider time. Remote learning takes more time because students are no longer in a space which is designed to support their learning. So, Make sure your instructions are clear. Don't make students run around trying to figure out the details. If you want them to start with week six, make sure that week six has a date on it so they know when to start. Be mindful of time requirements under the remote teaching context. Students will have to do things like work with data at strange hours. So they might find themselves working late at night or in the early hours of the morning when it's quiet at home or when data is cheap. Um, they might have constant demands on their time in terms of family and nursing and so on. So just be careful that in this context, time is going to be a very serious issue for our students. Try to distribute activities to allow for access challenges. And finally, make sure that you clarify expectations and behaviors. If, for example, you're planning to join students synchronously for an hour a week, let them know when it is and then as much as possible stick to that. If on the other hand you want to be available to your students asynchronously throughout the week, then say to them that it'll probably take you until the end of the working day or maybe even 24 hours to respond to an email and then try to stick to that. The process of 
transferring, translating and transforming student activities for the remote teaching context is not one to be underestimated. It will take creativity and a good dose of, of hard work to transform some of the very beautiful courses that we're seeing into an online environment. So while you're working towards that, don't forget the SILT Remote Teaching page where these webinars and the guides live. And second of all, follow SILT on Twitter where we'll be sharing resources as they come up. Good luck with your teaching folks and we wish you the very best for the semester ahead.